why Africa is the continent of the future. Hello Displorers, welcome to another informative video presented to you by Displore and thanks for watching. Here at Displore, we love bringing you a breakdown of cultural, social and economic trends and issues that determine both the future of the African continent as well as the world. In this video, we shall be having one of such discussions by looking at why the African continent might just be the continent of the future. To fully understand the dynamics of such possibilities for the continent which is currently considered the poorest amongst its peer continent, we will need to analyze several factors about the continent. It will require an in-depth look at the demographics, the raw materials, its alliances, governments as well as its tourism. Through this, we will look at its pitfalls as well as its potentials in the horizons. But first, the history of anything is always a good place to start to understand its present state as well as predict its future. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Background of Africa Africa, particularly Eastern Africa, is widely accepted as the place of origin of humans and the Hominidae Cladae, meaning that Africa has a long and complex history. The earliest hominids and their ancestors have been dated to around 7 million years ago, and the earliest Homo sapiens remains found in Ethiopia, South Africa, and Morocco date to circa 200,000, 259,000, and 300,000 years ago, respectively. And Homo sapiens is believed to have originated in Africa around 350,000 to 260,000 years ago. Slavery had long been practiced in Africa, where between the 7th and 20th centuries, the Arab slave trade, also known as slavery in the East, took 18 million slaves from Africa via Trans Sahara and Indian Ocean routes. Between the 15th and 19th centuries, the Atlantic slave trade took an estimated 7 to 12 million slaves to the New World. In addition, more than 1 million Europeans were captured by Barbary pirates and sold as slaves in North Africa between the 16th and 19th centuries. Imperial rule by Europeans would continue until the conclusion of World War II, when almost all remaining colonial territories gradually obtained formal independence. Independence movements in Africa gained momentum following World War II, which left the major European powers weakened. In 1951, Libya, a former Italian colony, gained independence. In 1956, Tunisia and Morocco won their independence from France. Ghana followed suit the next year in March 1957, becoming the first sub-Saharan colony to be granted independence. Most of the rest of the continent became independent over the next decade. Demography Africa is the world's second largest and second most populous continent after Asia in both cases, with 1.3 billion people as of 2018. Africa's average population is the youngest among all the continents with median age of 19.7, when the worldwide median age is 30.4. It contains 54 fully recognized sovereign states, 8 territories, and 2 de facto independent states with limited or no recognition. Algeria is Africa's largest country by area, Nigeria is the largest by population. African nations cooperate through the establishment of the African Union, which is headquartered in Addis Ababa. Ecology and Biodiversity Africa boasts perhaps the world's largest combination of density and range of freedom of wild animal populations and diversity, with wild populations of large carnivores such as lions, hyenas, cheetahs, and herbivores such as buffalo, elephants, camels, and giraffes, ranging freely on primarily open non-private plains. It is also home to a variety of jungle animals, including snakes and primates, and aquatic life such as crocodiles and amphibians. In addition, Africa has the largest number of megafauna species, as it was least affected by the extinction of Pleistocene megafauna. Although Africa is home to such biodiversity, it is heavily affected by a wide range of environmental issues, including desertification, deforestation, water scarcity, and other issues. Africa has over 3,000 protected areas, with 198 marine protected areas, 50 biosphere reserves, and 80 wetlands reserves. Human encroachment, civil unrest, and the introduction of non-native species threaten biodiversity in Africa. Economy Although it has abundant natural resources, Africa remains the world's poorest and least developed continent. The result of a variety of causes that may include corrupt governments that have often committed serious human rights violations, failed central planning, 
high levels of illiteracy, lack of access to foreign capital, and frequent tribal and military conflict ranging from guerrilla warfare to genocide. Its total nominal GDP remains behind that of the United States, China, Japan, Germany, the United Kingdom, India, and France. A large part of Africa's problems is due to the legacies of European colonization in Africa and the Cold War. 81% of the sub-Saharan African population was living on less than $2.50 per day in 2005. Sub-Saharan Africa is the least successful region of the world in reducing poverty, some 50% of the population living in poverty since 1981, a figure that rose to 58% in 1996 before dropping to 50% in 2005. Some of it is attributed to unsuccessful economic liberalization programs spearheaded by foreign companies and governments, but other studies have cited bad domestic government policies more than external factors. Why Africa is the continent of the future Despite this low concentration of wealth, recent economic expansion and the large and young population make Africa an important economic market in the broader global context which is what makes the continent such an appealing continent for investments and future settlements. From 1995 to 2005, Africa's rate of economic growth increased, averaging 5% in 2005. Some countries experienced still higher growth rates, notably Angola, Sudan and Equatorial Guinea, all of which had recently begun extracting their petroleum reserves or had expanded their oil extraction capacity. In a recently published analysis based on World Value Survey data, the Austrian political scientist Arnold Tosh maintained that several African countries, most notably Ghana, perform quite well on skills of mass support for democracy and the market economy. While one should be especially hopeful about the development of future democracy and the market economy in Ghana, the article suggests pessimistic tendencies for Egypt and Algeria, and especially for Africa's leading economy, South Africa. Tausch also maintains that the certain recent optimism corresponding to economic and human rights data emerging from Africa is reflected in the development of a civil society. The continent is believed to hold 90% of the world's cobalt, 90% of its platinum, 50% of its gold, 98% of its chromium, 70% of its tantalite, 64% of its manganese, and one-third of its uranium. The Democratic Republic of Congo alone has 70% of the world's coltan, a mineral used in the production of tantalum capacitators for electronic devices such as cell phones. The DRC also has more than 30% of the world's diamond reserves. Guinea is the world's largest exporter of bauxite. The Ivory Coast is the world's leading producer of cocoa, with 35% of global harvest and production in excess of 1.7 million tons in 2014. As the growth in Africa has been driven mainly by services and non-manufacturing or agriculture, it has been growth without jobs and without reduction in poverty levels. In fact, the food security crisis of 2008 which took place on the heels of the global financial crisis pushed 100 million people into food insecurity. A Harvard University study led by Professor Kalestos Juma showed that Africa could fit itself by making the transition from importer to self-sufficiency. African agriculture is at the crossroads. We have come to the end of a century of policies that favored Africa's export of raw materials and importation of food. Africa is starting to focus on agricultural innovation as its new engine for regional trade and prosperity. Partnerships and Alliances In recent years, the People's Republic of China has built increasingly stronger ties with African nations and is Africa's largest trading partner. Chinese companies have invested over $1 billion in Africa. During U.S. President Barack Obama's visit to Africa in early July 2013, he announced a $7 billion U.S. dollars plan to further develop infrastructure and work more intensively with African heads of state. He also announced a new program named Trade Africa, designed to boost trade within the continent as well as between Africa and the U.S. The US and China are just two of the foreign countries with current and future interests in Africa because of its enormous potentials. As stated by international reports, primarily by the United Nations, investment realized and forcing on raw materials in leading African countries such as Tanzania, Zambia, and Angola will contribute to the development of Africa to such an extent that seven of the ten most rapidly developing economic powers are expected to emerge from Africa over the next five years. 
Turkey is well aware of this potential as is China, India and Brazil, which is why they rushed to Africa to establish economic, social and political ties to various countries, with China taking the lead in this, which has been raising eyebrows. Experts unanimously agree that after years of fairly slow development, Africa is now undergoing rapid growth. The thing is, these experts have varying opinions on the path of Africa. The Afro-optimists who believe that Africa is set to become the continent of the future and the Afro-pessimists who believe that poverty-related tensions will only get worse. But the current dynamics plus the huge potentials Africa has with energy prospects, particularly in the field of solar electrification, its natural resources, plus its youthful population to build the skills might flow in favor of the optimists. The African continent is home to 11 of 20 most rapidly growing countries in the world. The world population is expected to reach 9.6 billion by 2050. Nigeria is predicted to rank third with a population of over 400 million. Ethiopia will also enter the list of top 10 nations, ranked 9th place in the world with its population estimated to hit 200 million. Given the African continent's large population, economic potential and strategic importance, there is no thought that the continent is well on its way of success and world prominence. From 2010 to 2025, Sub-Saharan Africa will bring in 386 million new inhabitants to the world economy as producers and consumers. The African continent has 1 billion consumers who spend over $600 billion yearly, while its annual growth performance stands at an average of 5% and has a rapidly developing middle class. Starting with agricultural production, African soil with potential to create higher value represents 60% of the world's as yet uncultivated soil, which is like a dream for the already developed world. Combine the continent's soaring population with technology, improvement in infrastructure, health and education, and Africa could be the next century's economic growth powerhouse. Africa will account for more than half of the 2.4 billion global population growth in coming decades, which will be as a result of high fertility and improving child survival rates. Technology advancement in mobile phone services is leading companies to rush to Africa, and South Korean electronics giant is joined by rival smartphone manufacturers like Apple, LG, and Nokia. Again, the top two most admired African brands are mobile-related, South Africa's MTN and Nigeria's Globacom, who both operate in multiple African nations, and the growth of these brands is an indication of Africa's potentials in production and consumption of technological products. Another propeller of Africa's growth is its involvement in women in its leadership. In 11 African countries, women hold close to one-third of parliamentary seats, which is more than in Europe. Rwanda, where women have 64% of seats in the lower house, has the highest proportion of women parliamentarians worldwide. Not only do African countries have governments with high female representation, they also have plenty of women entrepreneurs. African women own one-third of businesses across Africa. While African women are entrepreneurial, the overwhelming majority are paid less than their male colleagues. The UN estimates that the discriminatory gender policies in Sub-Saharan Africa cost the region up to $105 billion each year, or 6% of its GDP. But trends and dynamics are changing up as women are taking up great decision-making positions in Africa. Conclusion From the analysis and all the aspects discussed in this video, Africa has a huge possibility of being the continent of the future, by merits of its population growth, alliances with foreign nations, technological and infrastructural development, availability of natural resources, and raw potentials in renewable energy, as well as its gender equality policies. The flip side to this is that it might rather dive into a deeper level of larger mass population poverty rate, which is also eminent. If the population increases but then the raw materials of the continent are controlled by a privileged corrupt few, then poverty will be the other of the day, while a few enjoy massive wealth which is the current situation of many countries. Another scenario which will move the continent towards the negative terminal is the possible neocolonialism going on with the Chinese, and many other countries like the French investing heavily in Africa with terrible trade-offs such as the control of the continent's minerals, politics and infrastructure. This is a deadly trap, and if many countries in Africa do not retrace the terms and conditions of many development projects with foreign bodies and countries, decades from now, 
we shall be crying of the same colonial problems and exploitative tendencies as seen before on the continent, including the death trap. Hence, the key here is caution, because if that snakes down once, it just might do so again. There you have it, Displorers. Those were the reasons why the African continent is the continent of the future. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy, do well to give it a thumbs up, do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends.